Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wrestling World Domination Remastered. My name is Bob Hazelwood. It seems like it was only yesterday, but it's been six years since I had the privilege of co-hosting the Wrestling World Domination podcast with my friend and retired wrestler, Terry Garvin Sims. That podcast ran for a little over two years, and during that time, we were able to interview many of the territory stars from the 80s and the 90s. Recently, we've had requests to republish those episodes, and so here's the result, Wrestling World Domination Remastered. The following episode originally aired on April 16, 2014. It was our first interview episode and featured Sam Houston and Hollywood John Tatum. The episode has been slightly edited for time, clarity, and to remove references to future events. This episode is dedicated to the memory of Terry Sims, who passed away in 2018. I miss you, my friend. Hey, man, it's great to hear your voice. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, my man. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, You know, um, I've been through the ringer, and and, uh, nothing's going to hold me down. Nothing's going to hold me back. I'm still the same old guy, but there's there's quite a few changes. Um... And, uh, you know, I don't party like I did anymore. I don't drink. Uh, I lost my mom the week after I was incarcerated. I did five real hard years, uh, in a, you know, uh, being locked up and everything. I got pulled over for an improper lane change and got a DWI. And then I lost my mom a week later. Uh, her liver shut down, and a lot of it was due to alcohol. And I made my decision to quit then, and uh, I haven't picked up a drink since. So um, I'm doing real good. I still have a good time. Everywhere going. I don't mind if other people drink. I'm not like one of these ex drinkers, ex smokers that, you know, point the finger at everybody and look down their, you know, look down their nose at people and admonish them or anything like that. You know, to me, it's like, do what you need to do. You know, you do you, I'll do me. And I don't need that no more. Yeah. Anyway, how's it going with you? Hey, brother, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just getting old and I'm a little beat up, but other than that, you know, life's We're good. good. I'm here in Kentucky now and, um, you know, I lived in Texas for so long. I, I, I have stayed up with your posts on Facebook, you know, and I'm sorry that we haven't talked or anything. I just wanted to say I'm really proud of you. I, I know what you've gone through. I've suffered from an addiction myself. It wasn't the alcohol, but of course it was the pain medicines. Yeah, well, and, you know, it's uh, easy to get hooked. Yeah, it is. You know, especially in the business that we were in, you have so oh, many injuries and everything. Are you in good yeah. shape right now, Sam? Yeah, I've been working. I've been working out some, and then I work offshore uh, building scaffolds about a hundred, anywhere from one hundred and forty to one hundred and eighty feet in the air above the water. You know, sharks underneath of me and everything. Yeah, so you know, I, I kind of keep in, uh, in shape, just standing on a two inch bar and building something safe for other people to work. You know, but you know, so they can get out there and do their work, and then I go back and tear it back down. So I'm a supervisor, but I usually work by myself. Wow. But, it, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and speaking about commercials, you know, um, the one, I was tearing a scaffold down one day, and uh, uh, the guy that was helping me said, hey, he goes, uh, look over the, you know, when you pull that board up, look down. And I pulled that board board up and handed it to him and looked down, and there were six sharks underneath of me. And it was really bad because I had just come back from break where I had eaten two Snickers candy bars, and the only thing that went through my mind was the two the commercial with the two sharks and they were going oh Steve he was good he just had a Snickers I haven't had a Snickers bar in a, in thirteen months now <laughs> well you know you swam with sharks in the wrestling business for years so you might as well be working above them now right yeah well yeah but you know I've had a few experiences with them you know we we hey, fish for hey, them out there too can, you, can anybody hear me in there anybody hear me oh Hollywood. Wow. I, I was hey, John. calling uh, Elton John, uh, Benny and the Jets. I was on to make a uh, request. Are you all playing any uh, hits tonight? <laughs> Hollywood, how are you, my friend? Oh, man, uh, I'm blessed. I, I, I called in. Uh, I, I was kind of listening to Sam talk. Uh, I just wanted, when I heard Sam was going to be in there, on here, I I didn't know he was going through so many things in his life, but I was just wanting to say some things that I've never been able to say to him. 
and I thought it was an excellent opportunity. So that's the reason I was calling. If y'all uh, uh, grant me that, and let me just say a few things about Sam Houston. Is that okay? But you sure. got all the time you want. Thanks, Thanks. Sam Houston. Um, he and I were both young in this business together. Had everything in the world going for us. We uh, didn't take advantage of it, like things like going to the gym every day like we should and all that. But psychology-wise, i got to tell you, there's not a person on the planet who had better psychology, who had a better understanding of this business, and worked harder and did a better job than Sam Houston. And I know I've never <laughs> said that to you, Sam. You truly were um, a night off for me. It was always a pleasure to be in the ring with you. I knew I'd never get hurt. Uh, I'd always have, you might, but not me. <laughs> um, but I'm sorry. I, I'm glad to hear you're not drinking. I did hear that part. That's awesome, dude. Um, I know that's a tough demon to get off your shoulder. Um, yeah, it is. But I'm glad you're working on that. I don't know what else you're working on, but God bless you. You know, anything I can do to help you, anytime you know where to find me. This old country boy lives up here in Pensacola, Florida. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, uh, let me ask you this, John. Are, are you still working at all? Negative. Negative. No? Not one, not one day have I ever uh, worked since the day I left. Uh -huh. uh, I did one. I, I take that back. Two autograph deals, but I have so much money. That um, uh, that's why they didn't ask me back. You know, I asked what I asked. You don't want to pay me, and I show them, hey, you can get Ric Flair for half the price, dumbass. Don't pay me. Yeah, you know. Why yeah, you I, pay me? I don't need to leave the house. I don't need it. You know, I mean, money's yeah. not that important to me. I mean, I'm, I'm just blessed with plenty of food and great Well, now on top of that, you're married to a Kentucky woman. Well, uh, and I could say, unfortunately, you're right. Uh, <laughs> well, you know that yeah. Kentucky's the home of fast women and beautiful horses, right? I do know that, and bitches, and um, <laughs> some other things too. But I do. I got a quick. Hobby. I got a quick, quick John Tatum story to tell. Um, well, actually, two that, that kind of go hand in hand. But the first time I met John, I was working for World Class, and he was working for somebody else. Um, and I went to see their show. It was right around the corner from the Sportatorium at the Longhorn Ballroom. And John was helping book the show. And he comes up to me, and he sees me, and he says, So you want to work for me? And I said, Well, no, John, I just came to see the show. I said, uh, you know, I still got a position with uh, world class, and he turns around and says, "Okay, then f you." <laughs> I knew immediately then hey. that I'd like him. <laughs> yeah, hey. and Sam, 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 I believe will be the first to tell you. I hate to speak for Sam, but his father was um, a genius and a booker, and all the things that I enjoyed being before I retired, which was enjoyable right around the corner from the sportatorium. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that part of it. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's, yeah, it um, is. hiring the fight. Fuck you. You don't want to work for me? Fuck you. Okay. You ain't going to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, it's all good, man. We just. Well, the uh, second time I met Johnny Tatum, I, like I said, I knew I liked him the first time, Sam, but listen to this. This is even better. Um, we were working a show in Austin, and I was riding with Gary Young, and a girl from the crowd asked me if I'd ride back with her. And I did, and I ended up going home with her. Well, next day I find out that John had been seeing her. So <laughs> I had this... Uh, hey, was she from Texas? Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Texas, I yeah. In fact, you ended up living with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really okay, you know who I'm talking about, right? Ahead. So, no, um, clue, but go ahead. I was just yeah, well, um, anyway, I had had a similar situation with a guy in Memphis, and it was Sid Vicious, of all people. So I figured I'd just nip it right in the bud, and, you know, next time I saw John, he came in to work for the USWA or World Class, one or two, 
And I went up to him and I told him, you know, what had happened right away. And I said, man, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you were seeing her. John turns around and says, oh, man, that's, that's cool. No problem, man. And he says, was she any good? <laughs> I knew then that I really liked John. <laughs> Well, we probably shouldn't be talking about girls on this thing, with uh, especially <laughs> Sam Houston, seeing that he had who, all the women. Probably, probably ruined his life. He, he had so many beautiful girls every day at his beck and call. Well, yeah, uh, we were. I didn't, I, I didn't take advantage of it. <laughs> you didn't, and, and, and you know what? That's why I said from the beginning of this thing, you're, you're a really true gentleman. You, you handled yourself. Every time, I mean, once the uh, the curtains was shut and it was time for us to go to our hotel rooms, that's a different story. You and me got it on. But when we got to our office and we got in that squared circle, we did our thing. We did our yeah. job. And then we uh, had fun afterwards, you know. It's, yeah. And we were at where we were at. But, um, yeah, Johnny, I want to thank you for I mean, everything you said. I mean, that, that you know, that that. That means a lot to me. It really does. You know, I I tried. I always tried. And I'll continue to try. But that really meant a lot to me, John. Thank you very much for that. Hey, uh, do y'all remember this night? Um, okay, one night we were at the sportatorium. And you remember that dressing room. It was, it, the sportatorium was a horrible place. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah I've been there <laughs> over 500 times, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they were, they were getting ready to do some tag team tournament or something like that. And remember the corner I always used to sit in back in the back, and I said, hey, I got, you know, uh, please, uh, anybody with any ethnicity, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't mean any, mean any harm by that. I said, hey, I got a good Pollock joke. And Scott Putsky was putting his boots on. He was standing up and putting his <laughs> boots on, and he stopped, and he turned around, and he said, Sam, he goes, I'm Polish. And I said, that's okay. I'll tell it slow. <laughs> I do remember that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I love Scott to death. But that, that, was, that, that was a gimme, though. He was a good guy. He, he truly yeah. is. Uh, yeah, you know, is. Uh, I think it's funny that I can remember that. But I do remember that. I remember you saying, it's okay, I'll tell it slow. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> but that's what I meant. You know, Sam was such a great guy in the dressing room. He just kept everybody light. And, uh, you know, John was just John. I mean, oh, yeah, I never had any problems John. working with John. Um, I may John have heard Rod Price. Too. I don't yeah. know. but <laughs> Wait, um, John and Rod Price had one of the best publicity promo, I mean, best publicity pictures I've ever seen. You know, remember oh, yeah, I forgot about it. <laughs> I, I wish I, I had a copy of that. What are y'all <laughs> talking about? I don't even know. Shit. <laughs> yeah, you had your hand on Rod's ass. <laughs> hey, y'all didn't know me and Rod were lovers? <laughs> well, I knew. <laughs> we, all right, we're coming. Yeah. All right. Well, shit. Did a surprise. Nothing like it was a secret. <laughs> all, all of us wrestlers are homos. I mean, that's how we wear those funny bathing suits and shiny <laughs> boots. I, I just did it for uh, the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. <laughs> all right, I got chores to do, Sam. I just wanted to uh, let you know that, brother. It was a real honor to have uh, worked in the same business as you and had the times that we were together to have those nights off. And I apologize for all those bumps I put on your head. And, oh, that's all right. Uh, broken fingers and twisted wrists. But uh, love you, man, and uh, I'll pray for yeah, you. Take care of yourself. Yeah, y'all. Hey, John, one you know. the question before you go, brother. Okay, okay. The, um, cool. I, I got a message from the Axe Woman um, just a little bit ago, and she wanted to know if uh, you were any kin to her with that last name Tatum. Absolutely not. That's a uh, name <laughs> that was get, given to me by Dusty Rhodes. Actually, a real fast story. What happened was, I was uh, going to work for Owens in Portland, Oregon. I lived with Michael Hayes, who I grew up with in Atlanta. And NWA was in the Omni. 
And that night, at that time, Magnum TA was their big guy. And what he did is he went out and he did this belly to belly in eight seconds or whatever. But because of Michael, we went out in the Omni and Magnum worked with me for like 10 minutes in the Omni. Wow. And I was like, I blown up, couldn't breathe, came back to the dressing room. On my way to work for Owens in Portland, Dusty Rhodes came into the dressing room and asked me, would I go to work for him? And he says, I hate your name, and I think I want to change it to Hollywood John Tatum. And that's where it came from, dude. That's where that's Hollywood sitting, came from. That, sitting in a shower in the Omni, I was vomiting because I went 10 minutes with the Magnum TA. Couldn't breathe. All I could do to get the vomit out of my body. I'm sure Sam can understand yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. You got to swallow it back, yeah. Oh man, but I've done that in the rain. It ever happened? No, it. Was, it uh, I guess Magnum TA was the reason I uh, actually got the job in this business. Other than going to Portland, no, the Lord knows what happened there. That's, well, Johnny, I'll just say this, man: you were a great worker. You were a terrific. Yes, sir. Oh, you uh, you also were one hell of a golfer. You know, you and I played a lot of rounds of golf together. I'm uh, I'm better now that I get to play every day. Um, I'm having some surgeries done this year, some of that little stuff like wrists and hips and those kind of things from wrestling. I'm going to get all those things done. I uh, got, got one scheduled in two weeks for my wrist, but, uh, so I haven't been playing in a few months. But, yeah, I play golf about five days a week. Love it. Um, I can, I know I beat you the last time I was playing you and it would be even worse now. Uh, oh, well, I haven't picked the club up since my neck surgery, to be honest with you. So I'm sure you'd beat me silly because you were a heck of a ball striker, man. We used to play that club over to Las Colinas. You remember that? Man, the, where that they club. played the Byron Nelson every year? Uh, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for you, I uh, think you uh, got, I couldn't have got on over there if it wasn't for you. Yeah, we had a little hook up there. Um, not we, not we. You, <laughs> you had yeah. a hook up, and I just bummed off of you, brother. Well, you and I went over there several times, and I just remember that the uh, girls that come around and sold the drinks and stuff would always flirt with Hollywood and leave little old Terry alone. And not only that, I was getting my butt kicked on the golf course. So by the time we left, you know, it was all good. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I appreciate you lying like that. But that's just not how it happened. I did beat your butt in golf, but with that long hair and it's pretty funny. You and Sam both, y'all pretty boys. Y'all have no problems. No, no, hey, no, no talking to Hollywood of, when y'all were around, trust me. So stop <laughs> making that crap up. Stop blowing smoke up my ass because it didn't happen that way. <laughs> no, it did. It uh, did. You were you were Hollywood. Sam was the he was the one that all the girls like now. I was just a little fish in a great big pond, and I was just lucky to be there. You know, I never was the worker you guys were. I had a few wars with Hollywood and Rod, and I'll say this. Hollywood was a night off, but that Rod Price was one stiff son of a gun. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, come on now. Rod's supposed to be meeting me for church pretty soon, so, you know. You know, I got to keep it real. <laughs> you know, yeah, I would hit him with a left for me, would you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you so, got yeah, that. I guess, I guess y'all were wanting me to stay in the ring when I was running over there to tag my partner. Huh? Y'all no. wanted me in there, huh? No, yeah, but I didn't I, breathe. I needed him. Rock, rock, I do right have there. a real quick yeah. story, though. Man, I don't know if you'll remember this or not, but... They were going to, you and Rod were the tag team champions, and they were going to put the belts on me and someone else. And, and y'all so I didn't want to do quit. that. <laughs> do you I remember this? I quit. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm you said, ahead. I'm not doing that. Right, and I, I took said, I y'all quit. back in the back, and I said, in that office where Gary Hart used to book, remember? And Kenny Mantell. And I said, look, yeah. guys, if y'all do it, I'll get in the ring the whole time. Y'all could beat me senseless for 10, 15 minutes, however long you want to go. We set up some spots where you backdrop me over the top rope. And man, I mean, I really bumped my butt off for you all. But you, after you heard it, you said, yeah, I'll do that. 
<laughs> yeah, and you know what? I honestly can remember that, and you did. You truly did fly over a top rope. And I'll tell you this, I don't have a tape, but I've seen it before, and it's awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Anybody can throw somebody over. It's the one going over, you know, does the important part. But uh, yeah, I remember when, when I said, look, man, uh, Rod, you whipped me into the ropes, and John, you just backdropped me over the top. Bro, his <laughs> eyes lit up, Sam. He's like, oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. And what the cool part is you can watch 100 hours of tapes of him, and you'll never see him do it. So, I mean, it's really awesome that he did do that for for me or for us. And I well, I only did that. that for a couple of people. And I would have done it for Sam in a heartbeat, but he was, you know, always a baby face when I was a baby face when we worked together. I wouldn't have done that for anybody else. I can promise you that you were you were probably my favorite person. You and Gary Young were probably my favorite two to work against in that territory. Whoever you're on the phone with, you probably yeah that, that too. No, Gary's yeah. fine. I John Mantell, to Gary. you're the greatest. Uh, uh, <laughs> Black Mark, you're the greatest in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I know that routine. <laughs> all right, you told all your stories. You want me to tell some of mine? Yeah, um, go ahead, baby. No, nah, I don't. I'm Head out there. Got, I'm, I got no, big shows. Well, you got kids and that and stuff that probably listen to this. Shoot, I wouldn't do nah, that. Nah, we'll, we'll delete it out on the replay. <laughs> you can tell whatever you I want on me, do. John. Seriously. I wouldn't take the chance of having them... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just say this: It was uh, we had some good times. Oh well, yeah, did. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was in our younger days, and yeah, we had our demons, but we definitely had some very, very good times <laughs> together, didn't yeah, we? we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? They were all your fault. None of them were mine. I was just a follower. I was following you. Oh, like Sam, you do Sam. you believe that? Even for <laughs> no. A Oh, no. no, no, no. he was Pinocchio, he his nose would be. Uh, well, he wouldn't be able to talk on awesome. the phone. Well, you know, I was telling you the story about when I met you. You really and truly reminded me of Michael Hayes in a way, because that was something that Michael would say. You know, I'll oh, fuck you then. But you know, I liked him immediately. I mean, it's just one of them things that. You like a guy or you don't. I like Sam immediately. I mean, Sam, everybody likes Sam. He was somebody you wanted to work with each night, you know, in the ring. And like we said, heck, all the girls screamed and hollered for him. We were just second-rate citizens when it came to to the women liking us. Sam was around. (laughs) Well, I think let me just say this, um, Michael Hayes, he, all of us know Michael. Michael and I grew up as neighbors. I'm not trying to spread rumors about Michael, but Michael grew up with a wonderful mother and no father. At being a neighbor, my father became Michael's father figure. So Michael and I basically slept in the same home either his or mine, every night together. So that's how I was able to, and you say when you met Michael, you saw similarities. Well, that's because we grew up together. Makes total sense then, you know, because, I mean, there really was a lot of similarities to the way that you all presented yourselves. I mean, very professional, but it was just like you, you know, you never knew what was going to come out of your mouth. Well, let me say this out of my mouth, and I'll stop talking about Michael, but I do want to say it. Um, I did see on the Internet somewhere where they Michael's birthday just came up, and I will tell you this. Michael looks physically better than any time in his life, the way his body looks. He ate a salad for lunch on his birthday with me and his mom in a restaurant where we were the only people in there. Certainly, there's no alcohol involved. Then we went to the beach. We got in the sun. Um, and I saw some stuff on there about how Michael was, had a free bird party. Well, that just didn't happen. Our friend Michael looks good. He's doing great. Of course, got the job of a lifetime. But 
He's still entrenched up there in the WWF, right? Yeah, I saw him at uh, Mania the other night. Oh, did yeah, you go? He, he, does, he yeah. does his thing. Um, fortunately, we uh, live in the same place now, so we're able to see each other more often. But, uh, oh, that's cool. That's way yeah. cool. Yeah. Sam, um, you went... Um, Jake was inducted into the Hall of Fame, right? And you went yeah. to the ceremonies and all. Yeah, if I did the uh, I did the Mid South Legends autograph thing on Friday, and then uh, excuse me, Jake and Scott Hall uh, talked at the uh, Hard Rock, uh, not the Hard Rock, the House of Blues Friday night, doing their little thing and uh, you know stories of the road and everything. And Jake called me out of his surprise, the crap out of me, called me out on stage. And uh, let everybody know that I had five. I've been gone through a rough five years, and I had five years uh, sober. And uh, he told me he was proud of me, and that really, you know, that touched some heartstrings. I was, I was in a dressing room with no drugs and no alcohol. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And three of the biggest partiers, Jake, Scott Hall, and me. You know, so it was kind of neat because hey, we were all hey, here talking. Hey, uh, I think uh, Sam might remember this, but I don't know if you do, Terry. I, I think this is a little bit before your time. But there was a time that um, when you worked for the Von Erichs, every night when your match was over, they had a cooler full of beer and oh, every yeah. refreshment you needed back there. And everybody packed their stuff up. Uh, <laughs> some people like Chris Adams, they didn't like because he'd load up a 12 pack of his stuff and haul ass, you know, blah, blah, blah. But every night they supplied us with liquor back in yep. the day. I think Sam can remember that. Can you, Sam? Yeah. yeah. Marco yeah. Lewis yeah. would drive the. Uh, uh, do you remember that, Terry? Yeah, when I very first came in for World Class, they did that. And then soon after, Jarrett came in, and that ended. Um, yeah. And the payoffs went way down, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And they did. But he was fair. I mean, yeah. he was. Fair. Yeah, he, he was, was fair. fair. He wasn't. Um, you know, Jerry and I, he, he basically gave me my first good run, and... Um, we went toe to toe a time or two, but he did it very diplomatically. I've never had my ass chewed so uh, nicely, let's say. But Is this one with Eddie Gilbert talking about such a good run. Party with Eddie Gilbert. Is that when you feel like that was your good run? Uh, you probably so, John. Run. Yeah, that was probably the one that. Is that the um, one you were talking about? No, no. It was Beauty and the Beast okay. days. It was Beauty okay. and the Beast when I had okay. the long hair and was wrestling as Terrence Garvin. Um, uh, you know, I thought you were at your prime when I, you and Eddie Gilbert, to me, that was far. I mean, that was when you were, uh, to me, just my Thanks, opinion, man. was your best, but it's hard not to be great. Or have been great with Eric Gilbert. Yeah, he was just That's uh, true. like a, like a fan, like both of you guys. He was he was just truly gifted. Well, now you're uh, now you're telling a story. Eddie was gifted. I just kind of was along for the ride. We we were more the same size, you know. You and Sam are what six three, six four, six two. I know Sam. I'm six three, yeah. Well, I'm sure I don't know Eddie well enough to know, but I'm just knowing what I do know about him. I'm sure he was teaching and helping you along the way, and it was at the time in your career where you could uh, take advantage of somebody with his knowledge, giving you yeah. advice. And that's right. He'd that's like, just, in my opinion, what I saw happen. He uh, had 13 and, years in the ring at that time, and I think I had five and a half years, and he was – Really, really great to me. You know, we we never set anything up as far as the match goes except for the finish, and he would just basically talk me through it out there. Easy. You never got hurt. He never stiffed you. Um, you knew that it was going to be a night off, you know. I had to work some really long matches with him, but other than that. Another Sam Houston. 
<laughs> well, no, those, Sam, yeah, another Sam, Sam Houston. Eddie Sam, you worked with Eddie. Time. They were like, uh, Times, didn't you? Uh, and GW. Eddie, yeah, Eddie, yeah, Eddie was a night off. Well, even before that, Mid South or UWF, uh, I was working with Eddie then. And I mean, we just had incredible. It, anytime we got in the ring, we had incredible matches. You know, and I with bet. Eddie, it was kind of. It was Eddie. It was fun. It was you know, it was like when you get in the ring, like in the NWA when I get in the ring with Arn or Tully or somebody like that. You know, I was getting in there to learn, but it also brought out the best in me. And when I, when you get in the ring with somebody good like Eddie or Kurt Henning or somebody like that, that's you know, that's on top of their game as well. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, there, there there's nothing to going out there and giving it your all and then some. You know, you just I, keep wanting to yeah, give. But say- Sam, you got to admit, though, those guys, when they, um, the, some of them bent over backwards to help people like you and me, and some yeah. of them made it real hard on others, you know? You and I are oh, real yeah. fortunate. And Terry, we were real yeah. fortunate, especially like the Eddie uh, relationship I'm talking about. Relationship yeah, there. yeah. I mean, that's special. That that. I mean, he probably didn't have many of those. And you and I no. were fortunate to have great relationships. Well, these guys <laughs> knew your heart, man. They, they, and they knew you were all about the business and taking care right. of business. You know, it's a lot of people now that, that, that don't respect it, you know. And, you know, I mean, there, there is no weeding out process anymore. Uh, just anybody that has a few dollars is, is a wrestler now. You know, um, they, they put a ring together in the backyard, uh, break a fluorescent bulb over their over their best friend, and oh yeah, we're we're wrestlers now. You know, they 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 know nothing about actually getting in the ring and working. You know, yeah, well, and and guys like Eddie and Kurt and Tully and Arn and uh, Barry Dars, all them guys, man, all of them. Uh, even Black Bart. <laughs> I mean, he, oh yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Terry Taylor. He was pulling. He was pulling teeth with him, but he was awesome. You know, I love Bart because you can just beat on Bart. <laughs> um, That's true. You could beat him. Yeah. You could beat I, on him all you wanted. And you could beat on Bruiser Brody all you wanted too. Yeah. How much you yeah, but you get your ass into. <laughs> you just didn't want to pitch what you couldn't catch with him, right? That's it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it was which one of you motherfuckers are gonna get out first? <laughs> <laughs> that boy beat the shit out of you. I'll tell you another one too that y'all might not remember. I think he was around a little bit when y'all Buzz Sawyer. That yeah, was yeah, Buzz. Of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, I mean, he is great to work with, but he's tough. I mean, he talks. Yeah, to I'm kind of Matt Bornish. <laughs> yeah, what? Very Matt Bornish. Yeah, very, hey, I got one for you, real like twins. Uh, yeah, they were. True. They were. They were like evil twins, but great guys, you know. I mean, great for the business. Hey, I'll tell you another guy. I don't, I don't know what. I just saw his name because he asked me to be his friend on Facebook. I don't go on there much, so I hadn't gone on to say y'all yeah, know. But y'all remember a guy named Buck Rock and Roll Zoomoff? Zoomoff, yeah, I sure do. I know him real good. I, I don't know him real, real good. Personally, but, uh, man, what a great. He taught me a lot. He helped me yeah. a whole lot. Uh, I worked a bunch Scott of Casey. shows in Minnesota. I said I worked a bunch of shows in Minnesota when I was with Charlie Norris up there uh, with Buck. I think that's where yeah, he's Buck, from, isn't he? Yeah, he's from Minnesota. Yeah, we had to we had fun with him. Oh, he was funny. <laughs> Sam, what, you were uh, just going to tell a story. What were you going to tell, buddy? Yeah, y'all were talking about golf all ago and everything. Okay. And another big avid golfer was Wahoo McDaniels. Did y'all know Who? that? Did y'all know? Wahoo yeah, McDaniels. Yeah, I knew he golfed. Yes. Out of, uh, out of me the Carolinas. And, yeah. Me and Brian Adidas uh, were, Brian Adidas, we were, we had Spartanburg TV. And Wahoo had just became uh, Tully's uh, tag team partner, just turned and, and he was Tully's tag team partner there. And, you know, that in Spartanburg, they had the two dressing rooms and that little bitty hallway, and you both all went out the same door. And me and Brian had to wrestle Wahoo. Well, I had noticed Wahoo's golf clubs in Brian's, in the trunk of Brian's car. So right before we walked out to the ring, I, I looked over at Chief, and, and Wahoo, I've been Wahoo since I was like four years old. And 
and he still swears I owe fifty cents in change on a Coke for from Oklahoma City TV when I was a little kid. <laughs> so anyway, I walked by Wahoo and I said, "Hey, uh, Chief," I said, "Sorry about that nine iron. I'll get it straightened out for you." And he started shaking <laughs> back in that hallway. <laughs> and when we got in the ring, boy, I had never, I don't, I've been chopped by them all, you know, and I've taken them all. And Wahoo was hitting me as hard. Oh, I mean, he was giving me everything he had. And every time I hit the grab, I'd come back up and get another one, you know. Hey, oh, hey, and let me just tell you this. There's only a few, well, not a few of us. There's probably 25 of us that understand what you're talking about. And, yeah, yeah. they hurt bad. <laughs> they my, hurt. my tag team partner <laughs> that wrestled as the beast had to wrestle Wahoo for a, it was AWA and World Class and Jarrett's territories all pulled together to do some pay-per-views. And Mark drew Wahoo, and, of course, it was a fairly quick match. It won about five minutes. And Mark came back, and I swear, guys, his chest was just, it had handprints all over it. Oh, you could hear it through the arena. Smack, he didn't smack, play. smack. Yeah. We came back, he came back, and when he walked to the dressing room, first thing I did, of course, was poke that chest where that bread was. He went nuts. <laughs> hey, you know, he started you know, cussing me. <laughs> I, I, Especially Sam's situation, I will tell you this. For some reason, guys like him, when they do get an opportunity to get in the ring with you, they want to do that to you. I don't I don't know why they want to chop your chest off. I don't know why they want to do that. But because Sam's brother was Jake and Grizzly, you know, was his dad, blah, blah. I might connect with Michael Hayes, blah, blah. They just, for some reason, they get the opportunity, they want to try to kill you. Yeah, well, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's earning your stripes, man. It's there you go. Is. There you go. I mean, it's you look at stripes. it now and you go, man, I appreciate them doing that. But it sure hurt back then, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. well, but yeah. you actually kind of had that coming by that rib that you tried to pull, right, with the nine iron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of did, you know. But, yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought it got over, you know. It did get over. So. <laughs> it did. Mm-hmm. I, found out the, I found out the hard way. It got over. When he was yeah. pitching them chops, it probably got oh. over with the crowd oh. real well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, God. man, that was one of the great things about both you guys. Y'all made the road fun and enjoyable because people don't know how hard it is to get in the car, drive to a motel. One cool. town, you can't wrestle in the same town. You got to go to a new one every day, seven days a week. And we just go to a new town. And there's guys like y'all that just, you know, I'm, I got some screws in me. But you guys are always, uh, especially Sam, more than you, Terry, uh, um, always happy, always upbeat. Nothing's ever going wrong. We never had to drive too many miles. The weather's great. Y'all are always, y'all just made it as comfortable and as nice as it could possibly be. And I appreciate you guys. I appreciate uh, that, man. I can remember you and I making trips, and we didn't say anything. We we just there was times when you know you didn't want to talk, or I didn't want to talk, and then there's other times that we just talk our heads off, you know. Well, not Sam. Sam would. uh, I didn't travel a lot with Sam, but when I ever was in a plane or something with him, it was always Sam had something going. Different kind of humor. Funny. Well, he was. It was like that's what I said at the beginning. You know, he was the kind of guy that you wanted in the dressing room because he was going to be laughing, joking, cutting up, pulling ribs. You know, as long as they weren't on me, I didn't care. I wasn't like Buddy Roberts. You know, if you pulled a rib on Buddy, he wouldn't sell it for anything. Mm. But do that crap Mm. to me, you know, and I might get a little bit irritated. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, one night, one night. uh, one night, uh, Bubba Monroe, Spudding Monroe's son, and uh, James Beard had both tried to pull a rib on me. Well, uh, that night, George Armstrong was having a big party at his house. He had 10 cases of beer. So, and there was probably Halcyons involved in why the Bubba and James Beard both passed out when they did. <laughs> well, I took my Sharpie magic marker and I wrote stupid across James's forehead. Then I went over and wrote stupid across Bubba Monroe's forehead. 
so me and Murdoch and uh, Randy Rhodes stayed up to it was seven o'clock the next morning. We're still drinking beer, having fun, and we wake James Beard up. We're laughing hard, and James looks up and he goes, "What are y'all laughing at?" And I point over at Bubba. So Bubba, James stands over. He's standing over Bubba Monroe, and he reads "stupid" on Bubba's forehead, and he starts laughing. Well, when he started laughing, it kind of got Bubba stirring. So James goes to make coffee. <laughs> And then Bubba comes up in a deep voice, and he goes, hey, man, what y'all laughing at? So then I point to James, and so he's, when James turns around, Bubba starts laughing. So Bubba's laughing at James, and James is laughing at Bubba. Now, we had taken the mirror out of the bathroom, and uh, me and James had to drive to Thibodeau, Louisiana that night. And uh, we would taken the so. Me and James jump in his truck, and he's driving. We stopped at a convenience store in Dallas. We stopped in Shreveport and got gas. We ate in Shreveport, and we're on our way. We'd stopped at Walmart in Alexandria for me to get some tape. And we we leave in the Walmart, and we're running a little bit late. And that's when James noticed he had stupid written across his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and he got, kind of got mad at me, and I said, man, I said, it was Murdoch. You know, so, so he, believed, he believed it was Murdoch. You know, I had to come clean on that the other night. You know, I, I saw him as a one, one of the sweetest guys on the planet. And you do that, Jerry. You bully. Oh, well, no, no. <laughs> the red he pulled on me. To be a heel, didn't you? Yeah. James Beard of all no, people was, to her. That sweet, I, innocent, I, kind, I, loving I, gentleman. Yeah. No, I, 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 I've got a. I'd gotten opened up that night, and then we're at, the, at Lockers, and I was talking to this blonde chick, and she said, oh, that's not real blood. And James goes, you don't think? And then he hit my head, and it was like, it just poured, man. I went to the bathroom to go <laughs> clean myself up. And uh, when I come back, James is over there sitting with the blonde. And I'm like, oh, you look. <laughs> and you know, he'd oh. slide in on you, man. He'd yeah. Slide in. That's my point exactly. The sweetest guy on the planet ain't going to let nobody walk on us, our business. Uh, he ain't going to show you. That shit's real. That's, that's, that's he, he said he's writing a lot of he said he's writing a lot of stuff about me in the second book. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that... that uh, that took a lot of planning, actually, to write it on both their foreheads and then take the oh, mirror yeah. out of the bathroom so they couldn't see it. Yeah, I have I have a devious mind sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I got to tell you, I, the guys he was hanging out with, I'm sure they were telling him what to do. You were sure yeah, it was your it was, idea. I'm it was sure all they them. Were, it was all them. <laughs> you're, it was all them. them. Sam's them. nice they of a guy, right? Yeah. Did it. Yeah, it was all yeah, there. It was, it was there. How old were you? Nine years old then, Sam? Ten? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you first started in this about ten? Oh, God. I'm a lifer, man. I, I was, yeah, I was born Ooh. into it, really. Yeah, man, you I was know? almost scared to hit you. When, when the first time I got in the ring with you, I was like, damn. I'm not going to jail for child abuse. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, said, what the hell? Let's go, big boy. Hey, John, let me ask you this: Where were yeah. you when uh, when uh, Mike was uh, refereeing as Mike Sites? Were you going to the show in Pensacola and stuff then? <laughs> yeah, we uh, both went together a lot. Uh, I was my my dad was there. In college. I went to uh, uh, college on a golf scholarship. See, I was so with my dad that, in that. I was right. with my dad in that territory. Right. You know, back and in, uh, uh, yeah, with the um, Fullers and I guess yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, Fields, Ricky Fields. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all great people, great time. Um, yeah, I was in college. Then. I was going to school and playing golf. Um, yeah, Robert, Robert Gibson. Yeah, Ricky Robert. Gibson. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky Gibson. Uh, yeah. Ricky yeah. Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert yeah, he was. Actually, Michael and I used to, at the uh, local TV station here, we would set the ring up. It would hold probably the way that we had it designed. It looked like it had 100 people in there, but it was 15, you know. 
Uh, but we would set Michael, me, and Robert Gibson, and another guy, uh, Percy Pringle. You remember him? Yeah, uh, we I would set the ring up at Channel Three here in Pensacola, Florida, every Saturday morning. And that's oh, how cool. we got in. Gorgeous George Junior, and yeah. you know, we just kind of moved in that way. You know? Mongolian Stomper in there too. Yeah, but um, didn't have time for us at that point in his life. You know, I guess he was an older gentleman at that time. You know, that's really funny didn't. because he I was very nice I mean, gentleman, he was just, but he didn't have, I mean, he didn't get in the ring with us and show us like Ricky Gibson did and gorgeous George Jr. did. You know, yeah, Rick guys awesome. would get in before taping and beat you up a little bit, you know? Right, right. And you learned how to get beat up a bunch. You know? Yeah. And that's what we do. Did either yeah. one of you all ever work? Okay, Robert Fuller had an older brother that had that, that actually owned that territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ron Fuller, he was the original Tennessee stud. Did either one of y'all ever work against him? I did. No, I, I didn't. No. He would hit you yeah, with well, a punch, well, would and like they would wrap around, around your head off? and hit you in the opposite ear. Did what? Oof. I'm dead serious. His arms were so long that when he went to punch you. It was like it would wrap around your head and hit you in the opposite ear. Hey, why well, punch no, would? No, but we all had to bathe together every night, and you could see he had some uh, serious uh, just problems with his extremities because his pecker was like two foot long. You yeah, could see it, it kind of drug the shower floor, so I'm sure his arm was a little extra long too. Uh, well, I remember but, one time Robert was dressing next to me, and he stood up and made a fast turn when he was naked, and that thing whizzed past my face, and I swear I felt breeze from it. And, it wasn't and I told thought. him, I said, man, I bet you when you get an erection, all the blood in your body it takes to go into that thing, you probably pass out. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like to. I don't know if I want to keep it, but I'd sure like to try that thing for you know, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you bitch in now after 20 years of marriage and my little small seven inch pecker. So I can imagine with this two foot pecker what would be going on. But I'd like to try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're packing seven, so, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. You know, you, hey. You, Actually, you measured it more times than me, isn't it? About that? Yeah, bro, no, bro, I brought a time or two. Oh, uh, come on. I forgot. You yeah, I did, too. I did, too. Shit. I'm sorry. I forgot. No. <laughs> hey, man, that's cool. <laughs> Johnny actually did live with me for a couple of months, and... um I'll say this, where he would wake up in the morning and he'd walk in, I'd be sitting drinking coffee or something, and hell, you never know if he'd walk into the kitchen, you know, with no clothes on or what. That that thing scared me, I'll be honest with you. I stayed away from it. Oh, well, and and I appreciate uh, your hospitality back then. Hey, Um, man. It was fun. Brother. You had fun back then. Yeah, Um, you were a brother, I remember... So can we really? I mean, you don't. Do you have kids that are listening on this show? Because <laughs> I was going to mention a few times specifically, but uh, if your kids are listening, I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I knew you were going to turn PS on me before it was over with. I'm sorry. All right, truly, it did happen, but you were just watching. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, I was just yeah. running the camera. <laughs> Yeah, although we didn't have cameras back then, well, we would have. We'd all probably be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay. Ooh. Well, guys, mm. I'm going to have to get ready to get out of here. All yeah, right, look, it's great talking to you guys. Love y'all. I got to go. Love you. See ya. Be yeah, Hollywood. Love you, Sam. Easy, John. Yeah, hey Terry, thank you very much, man. I I got to get off of here. Got got to take care of some business. Man, I'm uh, really, really thrilled that you're doing good. And, you know, if there's anything I can ever do for you, please just don't even hesitate to ask me. I think you're just absolute super guy. All right. Thank you, my brother. You take right, care of yourself friend. and, and for all being your on. listeners out there. Um, I wish you the best. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sam.